Welcome back to my channel, everyone. It is Chanel here in Chanel's Corner. Thank you guys for joining me in my corner. I want to go ahead and get today's video. We are talking about the topic exactly, how I feel about dating. This is a little bit controversial, especially depending on what generation you grew up in. But I guess I'm a millennial and I was born in 93, I'm 27 years old. And my definition of dating has come from experience, not necessarily textbook. I've always thought this to be the most rational way of getting to know people. So before we get started, my definition of dating is, all right, hear me out, listen to me from the beginning to the end. It is going on a date, getting to know a person, exchanging interests, exchanging basic information, maybe possibly moving on to first base, not sure, that is always not guaranteed. But I can do that with multiple people. It's not just one person. So for example, I've gone on dates with one person on a Tuesday and went on a date with another person on a Thursday. Like I'm figuring out what I like, what I don't like, who I wanna revisit again in the future, who I wanna go on a second date with, what I kind of somewhat don't find interesting or I find lacking in one person, what I find in some person that reveals something about myself and that I don't want to be interested in anymore or I want to further pursue. So it's all about trial and error. I'll sign up for one gym membership for the rest of your life. Some of you guys are like that, but I personally like to have a different atmosphere, different equipment, different faces, different rules and regulations and sometimes I need a little taste of everything else. The difference in a relationship is once I find someone I want to agree to be exclusive with, which means we're both not no longer gonna date people, we're both going to commit to further learning each other on a deeper level, because the dating is the surface area for me. It's like the layers of the skin. It's the surface area, it's very superficial, and then you dig down a little bit deeper as you go on possibly date three, four, and five, and then after five, that's possibly, maybe, you could be a little bit sooner when you start inviting each other over each other's homes, when you start getting more comfortable, you don't have to wear your makeup or do your hair all the time it's more pajamas and a netflix chill type of vibe one thing i do want to throw in there is that dating does not mean having sex with multiple people and it still does not mean having sex with your date even if you're on the second layer of the skin or the second layer of the relationship mind you everyone's different and no one should be judged i feel like if you are single you can do whatever the hell you want to do okay. protect yourself don't bring in any unwanted babies in this world especially during these times just do it with the class do it with respect out of your yourself and just do it to have fun, do it to live your life and just do you, period. Figuring out what you want in yourself um, and what you need to fix in yourself and figure out what you want in another partner, whether it's for the short term or the long term, because doesn't necessarily mean that someone that you date is someone that's gonna be your boyfriend or girlfriend within the next three to five years. People change, as you've seen in previous videos. I'm not the same person I was six months ago, let alone a year ago, let alone three, five years in the future. But that person needs to enhance your life. If I don't see any reason for you as far as an enhancement in my life, we're definitely not gonna work out, okay? I need my kids because I am a queen. I need my king to be there for me. I need my king to elevate me in a way that I wouldn't be able to elevate myself. I need my king to spark something in my brain that I didn't see before. Make me feel better in the way that I'm motivated to better myself for my future, for my family. Not that I don't already do that, but an enhancer is a boost up from that, you know? Like for example, there are women who have amazing glutes, but you can enhance it with doing more glute exercises. It doesn't take away from the fact that that talent and that natural genetic gift was given to you. It just enhances it onto a different level so that you can appreciate a little bit more. Does that make sense? In the dating world, a lot of people are very, I wouldn't say modest and conservative. It's more like, yeah, I'm gonna put all of my eggs in one basket. I'm gonna date one guy at a time. I'm gonna waste three months of my life figuring out at the end of it that he is a fuck boy. Yes. Yeah. I said it, I've been through that, I've done that. Putting all of your eggs in one basket only works for a certain amount of people and it only works for someone who is able to take them one at a time. Everyone is in a community or a group or under the microscope that dating multiple people at a time doesn't turn into a woman being promiscuous or a slut or sleeping with everybody because people's pre 
uh, notions are that you're dating people, so you must be sleeping with them. No, that is not the case. My candidates are like, what do I see in this person in the future? Are they gonna be my boyfriend? Are they gonna be my friend? Are they gonna be a sex buddy? There's different categories that men and women put people in. So that is the same way how you find your friends, you know? If you know you're not attracted to them and you guys have absolutely nothing physically or sexually attracted to each other, you are automatically put in that friendship zone. I guess the process and interview process for friends, why not apply that same aspect to finding your lifelong party? I just thought it was a little bit out there and the pre-existing pre uh, conceptions about it seemed a little bit iffy. I didn't want to be considered a slut or that I was sleeping with everyone, but then there was a certain point where you just don't care what people say. You live your life. Only your closest nitpick friends understand your circumstances. And that really, at the end of the day, is all that matters. Family and friends. Associates can assume what they want to. Um, mutual friends can assume what they want to. And strangers can just do whatever they want to as far as what their thoughts of about me and my life and how I decide to live. But dating is something that I wanted to hit a topic on. I am in the process right now of dating. My last relationship was in July. That broke off. I am the best version of myself I feel like I have ever. It was the best and the worst relationship of my entire it life. Flipped over. It, it grew me into this most beautiful butterfly. The caterpillar stage was very long. It was sad. It was depressing. It literally took everything in me not to flip into a different character. I could have been violent, I could have been bitter, I could have been very aggressive and assertive and actually did some damage. But I thought to myself, hmm, I actually have something to lose. So I'm definitely not gonna lose her over a guy, okay? So that broke off. I hung out with my family and friends. I got back in the dating world. I continued to put a smile on my face and deal with my emotions. I did not ignore my emotions. During my dating, I let people know that, hello, my name is Chanel, yada, yada, yada. I just got a relationship a couple months ago. Um, just letting you know if I am a little bit more, you know, standoffish, not defensive, but a little bit slower in the process with texting you, with calling you, with being more forward. That is the reason why. It does not mean I'm not interested in you. It means I still have these negative thoughts I still have these healing and these emotions to get over. It has nothing as a reflection of my interest in you. Mind you, if I do say I'm not interested <laughs> and I no longer want to talk, that is a different story. There's no way to flip that. I'm not confused. The emotions are not guarding my emotion towards you. I'm genuinely not interested. It does come off that I have not told you that, and these are for special circumstances. If I have not told you that I'm not interested and I seem a little bit off, I'm just dealing with some stuff today. See, a whole point of getting to know each other, understanding where my heart has been so that as we go into the relationship and as we move on forward, I don't do anything that triggers what happened in your ex relationship. And then you don't do anything that triggers me. So it's a an exchange of data so that we can see if we can be programmed together in the future and get along. Not saying again, we're healed, we're here to heal everything that's going on. Insecurity is a different story. What I mean by triggering different things is if for some reason I always smack my food or I like clap and snap when I talk and that reminds him like of his like, you know, ghetto ex-girlfriend or whatever the case may be, that's something that I can die down a little bit until he gets himself together. And for example, on my part, something about beards. <laughs> Not saying it's the case, but something about beards really reminds me of my ex and it has nothing to do with them. It's everything to do with me and I'm gonna tell the person and I'm dating. Shave off your beard because you're reminding me of my ex. So just if I have my silent movements or I'm staring at you, it's just me accepting my emotion and accepting that I dodge a, a really big bullet. And I am grateful that I'm here with you. I'm grateful that I'm here getting to know you and we're getting to exchange each other's um, life and see how this takes us further. In addition to dating, it is very important to not always go out and do fancy stuff. Now, if you're dating multiple people, that crap can get very expensive, okay? I'm not saying that I'm always paying, but I have absolutely no problem as a woman splitting the bill with a man, okay? First of all, he's not my man, okay? We are both two different entities trying to see if we can come together as one in the future, in the near future, and until then, we can take care of ourselves as we have been doing before this first date. <laughs> so um, as it comes to it, if he wants to pay for the meal just to be a gentleman, I will allow that, but I will um, recommend or encourage that he let me leave the tip. Just little stuff like that. If he, if we go out to a movie, he can play for the tickets and I'll buy the snacks or the drinks. If we go bowling, he can buy the entire experience and maybe I'll buy a pizza and some Cokes. It's about a split spit balance so that even in the dating phase, you guys understand and can compromise, okay? If you can't compromise on a date, 
you're not gonna compromise alone in a relationship. And that's very, very important along with a whole bunch of other factors that are instilled in the realm of dating. I communicate to them that I have no problem splitting stuff. If you are a guy and you are dating women, you do not have to go to fancy restaurants all the time. I don't know why you guys feel like a woman always wants to get dressed up and dolled up. That is not always the case. And that's where communication comes in. Have you asked her her favorite restaurant? Have you asked her where she wanted to go? Did you take in consideration that maybe she wanted to take her wig out and take her lashes off and just take her makeup off and just enjoy being in the presence of you and lean on your shoulder and watch a movie at home or in the back of a truck? The simplest things can be the biggest moments for a woman. It's not always the fancy dinners and the champagnes and the butlers and the high heels that turn us on. It's a more intimate surrounding, a more intimate space that we can share with one another. Because in my experience of dating and with my friendships, I have never heard a woman say, my best moment was when we were at Mahogany. It's more so off the wall. Like, we went to go shoot guns and he, he showed me how to handle the pistol. It was, we went horseback riding and then we ended up booking a camping trip and I met his mom. Just like little stuff, the connections, things that people can tie memories to. Not saying that the dates aren't, you know, important, but just know that you should create little moments as well. The small things always build up to something bigger. So save your money, um, go on nice little intimate dates, ask if it's okay if you guys go to a park, if you guys um, do something at each other's homes or even at the apartment complex or home, but not such in the bedroom. I hate when men ask me to do stuff in the bedroom or on the couch, like bro, I don't even know you. And if you're doing this with me, how many other women have you done this with? Again, I'm not a serial dater. I do date multiple men, but that doesn't mean every Every single man knows where I live. Every single man has been in my bed or in my bedroom. That's another thing. You should be able to keep your private space in your private space. And to you guys officially make an exclusive and you guys are in agreement, this is a monogamous relationship, make your space sacred, okay? Your heart is sacred. The information that you share is sacred. And when you process that with the other person, everyone doesn't have availability to you. Everyone doesn't have access to what your gate code is or what your living room looks like. Create some boundaries and create something special for that person. Because when you do end up being with the one that you love and being with the one that now is your boyfriend or girlfriend, you can honestly say from the bottom of your heart, you are the first person that I brought home. Or you're the first person who I let in my, my new car. Not my going on a date regular car, but in my you're my girl car. I wasn't raised like me or have my same um, opinions, but that's just something that I got. And this kind of came up with the uh, Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan um, issue going on. Well, not issue, um, status that's going on that um, she dates a lot of men. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's interesting because she's one of the one women who no one has anything bad to say about. I think it's because she's pretty. I think if it's anyone else, they'd be like, oh my gosh, she's dating someone else and yada, yada, yada. Or everyone's just kind of just used to it. Um, if it was a man, I mean, like, I feel like the feminist would have something to say. I'm um, not necessarily a feminist. I'm more so pro-life, pro-do whatever the heck you want to do. And, um, if it was a man, I don't know if it would have been flipped. Hasn't been flipped before. I'm sure this is not the first um, situation under the sun where a celebrity, male or female, was dating a whole bunch of people. Was it Brad Pitt or something like that? But um, just do you and just be happy and just do it safely. Um, my practices of dating are completely different from a lot of people and that is okay. People who date like I do and people who date one at a time, I also like to let them know that, hey, you're not the only person that I'm seeing. So um, if you talk to me or give me a call and I have to call you back later and it's late, um, don't assume anything, okay? I'll let you know like, hey, I'm out right now. I'll talk to you when I get back. It's literally about communication and that definitely has to come off off the bat. And I hope I informed you guys of all the information as far as me dating. I am dating right now. I am still a very single woman. I'm enjoying the single life. I am preparing myself mentally, physically, financially, and spiritually for whomever the Lord has to be my king to enhance my life, to enhance my smile. In addition, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed today's content. Today was more about fun. The rest of the page will be about food, family, and friends, everything but fitness. And follow me on Instagram at Gorgeous Games. Thank you guys so much for watching me. I will see you guys in the next video.